In today's video, I will be guiding you through MX, his pros and cons, and some tips for playing as him and against him. I will be including everything I can find in order to make it a complete guide. Note that this is from October 2024, so it may be subject to change later in the future wherever he gets a buff or a nerf, hopefully a nerf, but yeah, let's dive right in. We can start off and take a good look at what MX can do thoroughly. He is the 9th killer and it has a cost of 1985. Like the 85 port. Get it? Huh? Alright, whatever. His base stats are insanity, consisting of 24 sprint speed, which is 1 speed above a sprinting survivor, 75 stamina, which is on the lower side, but has 70 base damage to make up for that lack of stamina. Everything here is very good. MX has two passives. First passive is jump, where it allows the survivors to jump at the cost of some stamina. This passive is used to accompany one of MX's abilities. His second passive, Bloodlust, allows MX to highlight survivors and his ability cooldowns are reset. His basic attack is a stomp with a large hitbox. His first ability, Charging Demise, allows MX to make a long dash in the direction he is facing. He cannot move or change direction while in Charging Demise. If he manages to catch a survivor, each hit of the charge will do 9 damage and drag them. If MX hits a wall or obstacle, he will be stunned like momentarily. His second ability, Pow Hop, allows MX to jump high in the air and land wherever is best. Every time Pow Hop is used, a prompt will appear in the survivor's screen. If the survivor doesn't jump, they will be thrown to the ground and stunned momentarily. MX can use Pow Hop to insta-kill survivors by landing right on top of them. This, however, will not grant his passive, Bloodlust. Let's move on to maps. I'll rank them based on how good MX can perform in these maps. Let's start off with Mansion. Mansion is an terrible map for monsters, but MX can use his abilities freely. And since the map isn't large, it isn't too bad to find the last survivor. But the sharp turns and lockers can hinder him severely. And that stupid hole with the bookshelf gap is a, a total nightmare for anybody. Mansion is going to the mid tier. Eclipse is generally an okay map. It has an exposed field and large corridors. Pahop can actually stoop you up to the ramps and save you a little bit of time and stamina that the survivors waste. Hiding isn't really efficient here, so I'd say it's a good map. The Joya Creation is the next map, one of the more balanced maps in the game. Thanks to the very long corridors, it allows for amazing charge value. However, the map is on the larger side and has lockers. There's also too many sharp corners that can be used to lose line of sight of a survivor, then lose track. This map will go in the mid tier. Dungeon is by far the most atrocious map to play MX in. The terrible corners, so many places hide in, it's nearly impossible to find the last survivor if they're far away. A terrible tier. Garbage. Pillars are overall a good map, but not for dashers, and MX is no exception. It's so easy to lose track of survivors in the 10 billion pillars there is. You can use Pow Hop to wrap around the pillars and make great distance, but the rest of it is still a hinder mid tier. Schoolhouse is by far one of the best monster maps in the game, and MX is in that roster. The long hallways and little to no corners and dead ends are a fever dream for MX good tier. Drainage system is a tiny map so MX has a lot of freedom, but it is basically impossible to land a dash unless you're on the bottom where no one really hangs out in there. You don't really need to use the dash as much since you can be heard across the map. And by then, they'll just go to the other side. Mid tier. Fazbear's Fright. Dog shit, bad tier. Forest is a very open map and allows MX to freely dash and hop. There's bushes and tents to hide in, which is the only leverage of the survivors. But he will most likely always have line of sight. Good tier. This should wrap up the map section. Let's talk about how you can play against him. There's several ways to stall an MX and buy as much time as possible. First method is to take advantage of his end lag. He has an end lag in every single action he does, stomping, charging, and pow hopping. This end lag buys you just a little bit more time. Stop running and get as much stamina as possible before he recovers. Running away won't do you much good since he has several ways to catch up fairly easily. So your best bet is probably playing off his end lag. Make very good use of your stamina. Another great way to stall out MX is to hide. 
I don't mean hide the whole match, but use stuff such as lockers, bushes, or other natural objects to hide while in a chase. Obviously, don't run in if he has a line of sight on you. Cut a corner and take shelter. This is quite risky since you can either die right then and there, or completely ruse him. Since he can't highlight you to another player's dead, this is one of your options. If you're completely out of stamina, you can try going through the MX as they may react slowly and stomp too early, allowing you a few extra seconds to make your escape. You should force an MX to use his abilities on spots that you know best. If you know he has a good charge on you, plan ahead and think of a way of avoiding it, by either moving to the side or finding the fastest exit. You should know which maps he's bad in and which he is good to use your judgement and skills and play off that. Always remember that he can catch up with ease because of both of his movement abilities. Use the maps to your advantage and cut corners and try to lose line of sight as much as possible. It's time to talk about how to use the beast. MX stamina drains insanely fast, but you have two movement abilities, so it really never matters. You can use charging demise to make distance and recover stamina. This allows you to tighten the gap with you and the survivor. While they use most of their stamina, you gain stamina while charging. Power up doesn't make you recover stamina in the air, but it does drain 10 stamina from the survivor, making it a positive interaction for you. One massive thing about Pow Hop is that if a survivor jumped for no reason or accident, use Pow Hop instantly to stun them and get a free kill. Pow Hop is very good for turning corners smoothly or moving into areas with tight spaces. You can also use Pow Hop when you know a survivor is low on stamina to force him to keep moving, and use 10 stamina. Just as they stop running, use it immediately to force out the little stamina they have and possibly exhaust them. Now we know that charging device is very good for distance, it also makes for good crowd control. You can attack several people at once with a single charge, and the ability is honestly an XP farm for MX. I claimed previously that you couldn't move while using charging demise, but you can actually move just a tiny bit. This interaction can actually save you from running into a wall or running into a corridor just inches away. If you hold to the direction you want to go, the MX will turn very slightly. It's extremely minute but can save you from a bad dash. This can also be used to prevent running directly to when a survivor turns left or right. You can tilt and land against the wall. The best way to use your stamina is to use it completely when chasing them. Then, use either or both your abilities and start walking to replenish your stamina. You make tons of distance by using abilities while maintaining most of your stamina making survivors easier to catch. After getting a kill, use some of your stamina, then dash your target to make the most out of your kit. One important thing to know about charging the mice is to use it correctly. Don't just throw it out whenever. You should learn how to use it and when to use it. A scenario would be a long hallway with no exit, or an exit that is far away. You can use charging the mice to catch up and have no drawback. This should be the end of the guide. I want to thank you guys for watching and let me know if the guide was useful or give me some feedback for the next guide. Thank you again and I'll see you guys in the next one.